Hello, welcome to my home. Ordinarily I talk to you about the process of making a wood turned piece on a lathe, tool sharpening, or some other process involved in making wood turned art. Today I'm going to talk to you and show you my collection of what I consider artwork purchased at different uh, turning symposiums in Utah and Colorado. Uh, and I just like to show you what I've collected over the years. I think it's very important as uh, wood turners and artists and people that create different things that we support one another. Let's get on with it. Let me show you some of the things I've collected over the years. Thanks. This first piece that you're looking at is made by Chris Pitlick of Sandy, Utah. I've known Chris for a number of years. He's been uh, very gracious in helping me with my own wood turnings. And the process he goes through is um, dyeing his vessels, and he often dyes them from the inside. And that accounts for the striking grain pattern that uh, is shown in the different colors he puts in his pieces. After he dyes his pieces, he puts 10 or 15 coats of lacquer on his pieces and then he buffs them out to a, just a flawless finish. This is a salt shaker in ash and it's made by Ralph Ott. And Ralph is a wood turner from Colorado. I've known Ralph for a few years. He's a very nice uh, gentleman and does some really, really nice work. Beautiful piece of ash. This is a small bowl that was made by Clinton Biggs. This is Box Elder. And this is actually one of the first pieces I ever purchased. Box elder is a wood that grows in our region, Wyoming, Colorado, Utah, and it has a striking red grain in it. Not always, but this piece is really, really pretty, and it's a very good example of box elder. This is a piece made by Catherine Kowalski, who lives in Cheyenne, Wyoming. This was a demonstration piece at the Rocky Mountain Woodturner Symposium, I believe in 2011. And I'm going to move my camera around just a little bit so you can get the, uh, the full impact of this piece. This is a piece of, uh, I think they call it color ply, but it's plywood with a lot of different uh, colored pieces or levels in it. And Catherine does some really, really nice off the lathe work with with uh, texturing and burning and let me just show you the inside of this vessel now when Catherine did this demonstration she did not complete this piece but I purchased this in the silent auction and I'm very happy to have it this is a small mushroom box made by Cindy Drozda who lives in Boulder, Colorado. This was also a demonstration piece at the Rocky Mountain Wood Turning Symposium in 2009. This is made from Banksia Pod. This is a very small box with the base hollowed out. Cindy does remarkable work with finials and hollow forms and I really recommend that you um, Check her website out. She does some amazing work, and if you've never seen her demonstrate, uh, you need to find out when she's demonstrating because she is um, really fabulous with finials and, and hollow forms. And she's helped me a lot over the years, whether she knows that or not. So a shout out to Cindy. Thanks. In 2010, I was very fortunate to be a demonstrator at the Rocky Mountain Wood Turning Symposium in Loveland, Colorado. Uh, this piece you're looking at is made by James McClure, who lives in Florida. James is a real artist. You need to check out his website. He does some really cool stuff. 
That year, he demonstrated what was called an elegant natural edge bowl. And I demonstrated in the same room directly after his demonstration. Well, James accidentally left this bowl and he flew out and I missed him. So we got together and I sent him one of my pieces, but I kept this and it really is a nice little elegant bowl. Kind of scared me at the time because I uh, wasn't sure if my <laughs> natural edge bowl, the same demonstration, was going to meet his standards, but he's a very, very fine wood turner and I also got to visit with him up in St. Paul and we had a good time up there too so James if you're out there keep on turning this is a very nice rectangular piece with a small bowl in the center it was made by Joe Herman Joe Herman is the editor of Wood Turning Design magazine and he's also a very good wood turner so um, can't remember where I bought this. Probably in Utah. This piece is in cherry. Now, if you are a wood turner or a woodworker, you'll recognize this wood as Cocobolo. I bought this piece outside of Puerto Vallarta in Mexico two or three years ago. We were taking a hike up the side of a mountain and there was a gentleman, young man, about 25 years old, turning on what I would consider some pretty challenging equipment. And most of what he had to turn was Cocobolo. He had very large bowls, probably 12, 14 inches in diameter. And this is a small uh, bud vase that I purchased from him. It was a very pleasant surprise to meet that man turning on the side of a mountain in a jungle. One of my favorite pieces. It means a lot. These are two small boxes made from ash. They're made by Jay-Z Karchner from Utah. That's the larger box taken apart. And they have a very nice inlay on the top of the lid. And each box has a very nice inlay on the top of the lid. The work on these boxes is really amazing. The gentleman did a very nice job with those. This is a very nice red oak pot made by Richard Raffin. Richard Raffin lives in Australia. He's been turning since about 1970. He is maybe one of the best known wood turners in the world. And when I first started turning, he really helped me through his books and videos and um, just my favorite wood turner generally. Uh, he does great work. He's very well known as a teacher and he's taught thousands of wood turners, certainly long distance like myself, because we purchased his books and videos. And uh, if you're new to wood turning, you should check out his books. They're classics. Some of them are 15, 20 years old, but they're the, the, the Bibles of wood turning, in my opinion. And you can also see a picture of Richard. Uh, this was taken at the Utah Wood Turning Symposium which was held in uh, Utah and BYU six or seven years ago, or maybe maybe less than that, but um, very, very important piece in my collection, thanks to Richard Raffin. This is a demonstration piece made by Stuart Batty. Stuart is an English turner. He lives in Boulder, Colorado. And uh, Stuart is, in my mind, technically one of the best teachers and wood turners in the world. Now, you'll notice this little bowl, very thin-walled bowl. 
as it rotates, it's uh, not very straight up and down. Well, he turned this green, so it's warped, in my opinion, very, very nicely. It's a, it's a very cool piece. He did this in uh, Billings, Montana, at the Yellowstone Wood Turning Symposium, held each October. So if you're in the area, um, this is one of his demonstration pieces. And I believe this is also ash. This particular piece of woodworking was made by a young man named Dawson. I think Dawson's about 10 years old now. Lives in Billings, Montana. And he made this for me. I'm not sure why he has the Star of David on there. But anyway, uh, Dawson just got a lathe. His dad bought him a, a lathe, so I'm looking forward to helping him uh, the next time I get to Billings. So thanks, Dawson. Good luck. I bought this Christmas ornament at the Utah Wood Turning Symposium a few years ago, and I can't remember the artist's name. The body of this piece is box elder, I'm sure, and it's dyed. The finial is really exceptional. I just love this piece, so I bought it. And if anybody out there knows who made that, I would love to write his name down. So he lives out in Washington or Oregon. Now, thank you very much for tuning in and looking at some of my uh, collected art pieces from the lathe. This last piece is made by, oh, probably an 11 year old sixth grader at the time. Her name is Chelsea. And she was attending our local middle school. And we had a lathe program going on, and she took that program and made this little Christmas tree ornament. Came down to my office and hung it on the door. And I could never put a price on this. So thanks again for tuning in. Thank you, Chelsea. It's beautiful. Well, this certainly isn't the world's biggest art collection, but it's pretty important to me, and I appreciate you tuning in. And if you like this video and you think maybe other wood turners might like it, I'd appreciate it if you'd share it with them. Thanks. See you next time.